Mm-hmm. Hello, greetings, everybody. My name is James. I am from the internet, and today we are going to be talking about Donald Trump. Okay, technically, we're not talking about Donald Trump. I mean, we are going to be talking about Donald Trump, but not so much the man, the myth, the craptastic legend, but rather the people that he surrounded himself with, who somehow, some managed to stay loyal all the way through that whole gnarly, you know, insurrection thing. And apparently all of these people have come out the other side after having been passed through the colon of reality. And uh, they're now squeaky clean and ready to rock. So allow me to show you what the 40 horsemen of the orange apocalypse are up to. Donald Trump is building a shadow Republican party. Damn. Now, before any of you Democrats out there start applauding, oh, yay, look, he's going to split up the Republican Party. Uh, probably not going to happen so much that way. Also, uh, as we go through this, I may or may not impart some historical context upon this that will make all of this seem infinitely more horrific, yet also make more sense. So buckle up. I'm going to start scrolling now, okay? A cohort of former Trump administration officials have launched the America First Policy Institute, a think tank organization aimed at promoting liberty, free enterprise, national greatness, American military superiority, foreign policy engagement in the American interest, and the primacy of American workers, according to its website. Now, the first hint that this is not a Donald Trump creation is the fact that it is a think tank. And those two things sort of not so much. Now, of historical significance here is the fact that all of these things were also promoted by the German Workers' Party in the early 1920s as Germany's economy tanked post-World War I. And people became very angry and disillusioned with their nation. And they liked the nationalist rhetoric. And they were just really looking for somebody who would offer them a sliver of hope. Just the dream that former economic prosperity was right around the corner. And all of a sudden, people were like, hey, maybe we should join this German workers' party. You don't know how that turned out. I'm sure I will get back to this history lesson in a few more paragraphs. Trump quickly endorsed the effort, saying that the founders, which include his daughter Ivanka Trump and her husband Jared Kushner, have my full support as they work to not only preserve the historic accomplishments of my administration, but also to propel the America First agenda into the future. After all, rabid nationalist sentiment is a keystone to a good fascist party. Just saying. I, I didn't invent fascism, so... Just pointing it out. Quote, we're all great friends and they helped us with this, said Larry Kudlow, a former Trump economic advisor who will serve as the vice chair of the American First Policy Institute board. For those of you who don't remember who Larry Kudlow is, he's an economist who worked for Ronald Reagan and he's been kicking around ever since. Now, of course, he has a show on Fox Business. Yes, the tentacles of the Trump empire are just spreading out, sprouting heads. El Hydra. The group has been months in the making and joins a litany of other Trump back outfits that have emerged since the former president left office on January 20th. It is by far the largest outside entity that has formed in the post-Trump era with an initial budget of 20 million and plans to double that figure before the 2022 midterm elections. Now, if there is anything that Donald Trump has proven in his five or six year long foray into American politics is that he can effectively raise money. He has the populist whip and he is not afraid to break it out and snap it over the head of the working poor who just want to hear that everything's going to be all white. With plans for an office in the Washington suburb of Arlington, Virginia, the group will also maintain proximity to congressional Republican allies who are interested in keeping Trump's MAGA movement afloat while competing with other conservative organizations that have gained prominence because of their ties to the former president. Fun little side note here. Most of those conservative fundraising groups have already received cease and desist letters from Donald Trump and the Trump Organization because he no longer wants to have any groups affiliated with him using his likeness 
or any of his words on their fundraising material. Why? Because Donald Trump broke up with the band and now he's a solo act. Among those other groups are the Conservative Partnership Institute, a group formed by former Republican Senator Jim DeMint of South Carolina that added former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows as a senior partner in late January. The ever-expanding ecosystem of Trump-aligned groups underscores the tight grip the 45th president maintains over the Republican Party, even as some party leaders and GOP donors privately fear the electoral damage his prolonged influence could cause in the midterm elections and beyond. Nevertheless, groups like the America First Policy Institute are betting that grassroots conservatives and the GOP base remain pleased with the ex-president's populist policies you know the racist shit and will generously support those who are committed to advancing the trump agenda hating on immigrants this is literally what the german workers party did they sewed up discontent stirred in some xenophobia preyed on everybody's economic insecurities put up a big flag played the magic songs whipped up nationalist puffery and the next thing you know brown shirts everywhere but surely donald trump doesn't care about that crap he doesn't care that his name is being associated with hyper nationalism in the early run-up to a complete fascist regime no trump's just happy that people are repeating the name trump that's it that's literally all he cares about he is the epitome of there is no such thing as bad press the america first policy institute is an example of how the 45th president and his supporters are building out a constellation of groups political legal and policy groups that parallel the structure of the national republican party and yet more evidence that not only does donald trump have no plans to step away from politics but that he is also constructing what amounts to a shadow version of the gop Hydra. what's that your normal right-wing political party that you normally blindly follow every four years when you pull the red lever? What? They're not saying mean enough stuff about immigrants or Jews or black people or Muslims? Well, don't worry, because Donald Trump and his loyal pocket of sycophants are hard at work making sure that you have a proper third option coming up in this next set of elections. The centerpiece of that shadow party is Trump's Save America Super PAC, which he has been aggressively raising money for months with, including during his extended efforts to protest the results of the 2020 election. According to a Trump aide who spoke with the New York Times, the PAC had $85 million in the bank earlier this month, roughly the equivalent to the 84 million cash on hand that the Republican National Committee showed at the same time. Donald Trump has convinced roughly 50 million Americans to give him the same amount of money that every single billionaire and corporation on the face of the planet combined gave to the Republican Party in the first quarter of 2021. Go ahead, let that marinate in your head for a couple minutes and really, really think about where we are. Trump has used and will use the PAC to fund his political activities. He's already promised to campaign against Senator Lisa Murkowski, a Republican from Alaska, and endorsed, among others, Representative Mo Brooks in the Alabama Senate race and Representative Jody Heiss's bid to be the next Georgia Secretary of State. Quote, I stand before you this evening filled with confidence that in 2022, we are going to take back the House and we are going to reclaim the Senate, Trump told RNC donors over the weekend in Florida. And then in 2024, a Republican candidate is going to win the White House. In that same speech, Trump also attacked Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell in deeply personal terms. Of course, because Donald Trump has the tact and political savvy of a brick hitting you in the face. Of course, that's what he's going to do. He's going to talk about how great he's going to make the Republican Party while simultaneously shitting on the de facto leader of the Republican Party. He's preying into people's fears that the Republican Party is no longer representing poor white people. And those poor white people are going to make up the vocalist portion of Donald Trump's base, while the middle class and wealthier people who agree in principle with his ideology are going to keep funding large fat checks under the table into his pack. And this is is why Donald Trump has more money than the entire Republican Party at his disposal.
There's also the America First Legal Foundation, which was formed in late March by longtime Trump confidant Stephen Miller. A Nazi. For the purpose of organizing legal challenges to policies enacted by President Joe Biden and his administration. And yes, Trump publicly endorsed it too, calling Miller a fearless principled fighter for the America First movement. He has backbone, integrity, and never gives up. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this before or not, but he's a fucking Nazi. Taken together, the groups will allow Trump to exert maximum influence over the party and its direction in not just the coming months, but future years. And while the group's main goal will undoubtedly be to position Trump to walk to the 2024 Republican nomination if he decides to pursue it, there are other reverberations, whether planned or not, from what is happening here. And again, Donald Trump has no fucks to give about any reverberations unless it is the reverberation of the sound of rabid applause as he stands on a soapbox in front of 30,000 people wearing red hats, breathing all over each other because masks are a lib turd commie conspiracy theory, along with vaccines of which... Donald Trump took one, but then told everybody they were bullshit anyway, because literally his supporters don't give a fuck if they live or die at this point, which is what makes them extremely dangerous, mindless, ideological sycophants. So no, I'm not concerned about Donald Trump. I'm concerned about the millions of chuckleheads who think that Donald Trump's going to bring them to the promised land through the power of white Jesus and all the money in their bank account. The establishment wing of the Republican Party, with McConnell at its head, is trying to move along from Trump. McConnell slammed Trump for his role in the January 6th U.S. Capitol riot, although he voted against convicting Trump on impeachment charges over his role. An outside group aligned with McConnell just endorsed Murkowski in Alaska. Yeah, Mitch McConnell just wants business as usual. Why? Because business as usual is how his poor Kentucky ass got worth like $40 million. Well, that and marrying Elaine Chao and then naming her the Secretary of the Department of Transportation. You know, the job that Pete Buttigieg has now. The problem with McConnell going with business as usual is twofold. One, Trump has zero interest in being moved on from. And two, the GOP base still sees Trump as its unquestioned leader. Hydra. The construction of Trump Inc. in the political space is evidence that the former president and his many minions, hangers on, and family members are not only in this for the long haul, but have absolutely no problem in building an infrastructure designed to marginalize the establishment's pillars of influence. What Trump is doing will force many major donors, and plenty of small dollar donors too, to decide between giving to Trump World or the RNC, as well as the various other establishment groups and committees that have always been the vessel through which conservative money flows. Now, I am most assuredly not going to push back on the idea that this is bad for Republicans. Of course it is. Donald Trump and like 40 loyal chuckleheads have now managed to raise as much money as them while also spreading out all their little tendrils all across the Republican machine so that they can essentially pick and choose who they will and will not support with the fringe portion of the party. However... Once those elections, whether they be in 2022 or 2024, get past a primary phase, and it is a Republican versus a Democrat, you can damn well be sure that even all the whipped up loyal sycophants of Donald Trump, if they don't have a Trump candidate running, sure as shit aren't going to come out to vote for the Democrat. So yes, be glad that Donald Trump has been removed from social media and you don't have to hear his gratingly annoying voice or see his bloated face as he just slobbers out bullshit and the nearest 15 people around him all just oh, do this all day. Yeah, that's great. You could, you could be happy about that. But don't think for a second that all the big brain people and all the big money people that surround him have gone away or have decided that they are no longer interested in making money because they are. And Donald Trump, he's the horse that's going to lead him to the oasis. Keep your eyes open, people. This has just started. Till next time, my name is James. I am from the internet and I am out. Peace.